an insect zapper from eBay. Such thrills. This one was described as the 2-watt LED version. It was the smallest of the range. They also did them with fluorescent tubes as well as the LED arrays. And I'm not sure why they say 2-watt, because when you plug it into the Happy, uh, it registers as, lights up a nice deep purpley colour, and it registers as 1.1 watts. So not quite the 2 watts promised. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 20 uh, near ultraviolet LEDs and an electrified glid, 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 indeed, I shall poke it. Oh, that very, oh, I should warn you before I do that, because that would make a loud speaker pop, as will this. Yeah, speaker pops. So I'll unplug it now. And when I unplug it, I'm going to short this out again, because it does hold a charge. I've checked this, uh, so there's going to be another speaker pop. Sorry. Loud speakery electrical pops. The instructions that came with this say, Pest killer. The mosquitoes, flies and some other pests are attracted by the lichting bulb of the insect killer to go inside and were killed by the electrical web. Can be used in a restaurant? Nope. Hotel? Nope. Hospital? Nope. Office? Hmm. Home and other places which require the insect killer. Uh, you've not touched electrical web with hand or electrically conducting materials. This is probably a good idea. It must be placed at least a metre away from gasoline and uh, petroleum. Um, please remember to disconnect before changing the bulb. Absolutely. Uh, switch it off when you go out. That's kind of pointless for insect killer. And moisture can damage and short circuit electrical plants. So don't take it in the bath with you. That is quite important. Now, it did come with a sticker on the bottom, noting that this is a double insulated-ish appliance. Well, by Chinese standards, anyway. I moved the sticker onto this little flycatcher plate so we could enjoy it together. Cautions. The metal shell. To ensure safety, you must connect the ground wire before you use it. Actually, it's not. Uh, to, you must connect the ground wine before using it. I'm, I'm all for the wine. But uh, there is no facility to ground this. There is a high-tension net in the Linset Killer. You must disconnect electrical source and release electricity of the high-tension net if you clean the dead mosquitoes, flies, and pets. The Persian must be a skilled man who assemble and disassemble it, so nothing for you ladies, I'm afraid. It's only men who are allowed to work in this, apparently. That's very gender-biased. I'll put the, uh, the hoppy out the way at the moment. And the first test, as always, will be... It's got a square pin plug in it. Let's pop the fuse out and see if it still operates with the fuse out. We'll also check what type of fuse it's got. It says it's a 3 amp fuse, which is good. Plug it in. Does it light? It doesn't light. Let's double check that that is actually on the correct connection here. Continuity. It's on the cracked pin. Note that it's got a plastic earth pin, that's fine. This thing is not grounded. Whether it should be grounded or not is a debatable thing, but having said that, I'm guessing that might be because the grid in here will be powered pretty much directly from the mains via a multiple, voltage multiplier. And I'm reckoning that there's going to be a simple capacitive dropper for the LEDs. Uh, on the back, it kind of loses points already for the fact that insulation is broken on the wire. It's kind of fragile there. Uh, so where it goes in, it's exposing the blue conductor. Now, I'm going to guess that all the electronics are in this end here. Let's pop it off. Oh, there's a wee switch on the side. Didn't even notice that. I'm not sure I'd rely on that switch as being safe isolation when opening it up in any way to... Well, not change the tube around that, or but try and brushing it out. So they did bigger versions with longer strips of LEDs. I chose the LED one just because uh, I'm kind of interested. Uh, once the flies are out, to see if it does actually attract flies. I'm not convinced that uh, near UV, this sort of 400 nanometer wavelength, is actually that appealing to flies. What's that circuit board do we have? What sort of circuit board do we have? Oh, that comes off quite neatly and far as a screw. Oh, there's the capacitive multiplier. Actually, this is also the, the it's one circuit board for both. Right, tell you what. Interesting. He fingered all the connections. Uh, the switch is indeed it's it's on the neutral. So they've switched the neutral instead of the live. So, yes, if you turn that switch off, you could still get a shock off this. That's lovely. That's 
That's very affirming, right? Tell you what, I'm going to take this circuit board out and we'll take a closer look at it. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. Let's just zoom down this just a little bit. Right. So the circuitry divides into two very distinct sections. It Literally, it's half the circuit board is the LED power supply and half of it is the voltage multiplier. We have a capacitive dropper based on this 300 nanofarad capacitor with a 100 ohm resistor for inrush in series and then a 2.2 microfarad, 400 volt, 2.2 microfarad, 2.2 microfarad, 400 volt capacitor for smoothing. We've got a bridge rectifier in the back uh, and then we've got two connectors in parallel, which is odd. They could have actually wired them in series. I wonder if that's just because this can also drive quite large uh, LED strips. Now, this is one of the LED strips here. They just literally slide out and they've got a connector in the end. And all we have here is a 200 ohm resistor in series with 10 LEDs. And these look almost like 2835, but they've got a lens in the front of them. Quite neat. The multiplier section for the high voltage grid has four capacitors forming a positive and a negative voltage multiplier with a 1K resistor in series for current limiting, in rush limiting. Um, interesting that it's got a position here for another resistor, but it's just like linked. This circuit board has weird tracks all over it. It's just like the design has been shuffled and modified, uh, but it's got the four diodes you'd uh, expect with the high voltage multiplier. That's pretty much it. There's really not too much to this. It's very... It's very textbook, if you will. Let's bring in the schematic. Here is the schematic. The first part of the schematic is the LED power supply. So the neutral comes over to the capacitor for the capacitive dropper, 390 nanofarad, 400 volt, uh, 470k discharge resist across that, kind of a moot point given what's going on in the high voltage side, and a 100 ohm uh, resistor in series for inrush limiting. Then there's a bridge rectifier with the live going straight to the other AC input. The output is that 2.2 microfarad 400 volt capacitor. Nice they've used 400 volts. Technically speaking, the voltage across each of these strips is going to be around about 40 volts because each LED, I measured them and at about 20 milliamps. It was about 3.3 volts across each LED. But the LEDs, there's 10 LEDs in series with that 200 ohm resistor going to the negative. And uh, this is where, really, they could have put those two in series and then dropped the value of this resistor, poss the, uh, this uh, capacitor, possibly, to 220 nanofarad. But they did it this way, which is quite strange. The other part of the circuitry is the zappy bit, the high voltage bit. It is a very simple dual voltage multiplier with the live going via 1K resistor to the bottom of these two 470 nanofarad 600 volt capacitors. They're all 470 nanofarad 600 volts. And then the neutral goes up to these uh, other two capacitors and then to the output. And uh, as the polarity changes, the AC changes, the current flows through this diode and charges up this capacitor. And then when the polarity changes, it pushes it onto that capacitor uh, and doubles the voltage. So you end up with about 600-ish volts uh, on either side. And because the diodes are pointing towards that end, that's the positive 600 volts. And because they're pointing away from that end, that's the negative 600 volts. Between them, you'll get about 1,200 volts. And that's what makes the loud cracks and pops and destroys insects. Very straightforward. Nothing really terribly surprising. Uh, things that are nice in this is the fact that ultimately, from a safety perspective, the high voltage capacitors are kind of reference to neutral, not that it really matters. It's all going to be a very bad experience if you touch them anyway. And even with the, the live going through that other capacitor, it's going to pass more than enough current to completely ruin your day. So that is it. Uh, the insect zapping unit, I'll bring the whole thing back up again. And I'll show you how. This LED strip just literally goes into a wee channel. Can, can that thing come out? No, it's kind of fastened in. Uh, but it goes into a channel and then just slides down the inside and then just plugs across and onto the connector here. 
it'll be way out of focus because of the position I'm in. And that is it. So there it is, uh, a typical insect killer. It's just really what you'd expect. It's pretty much like one of the plug-in ones, but just scaled up to a much larger size. So it'll be interesting. I might try this out. Not that we have many flies here, uh, but uh, if I spot any of it, I'll plug it in and see what happens. But quite an interesting device. So that is it, the Tega Global. That's where it came from, this uh, seller on eBay. But to be honest, the sticker is just like stuck on squint and they've just sort of branded it, I think, uh, to suit to their eBay listing. But there we go, the cheap eBay insect zapper.